Sonic the Hedgehog, running from left to right, grabbing rings, jumping on enemies, good stuff. You know what it didn't need? Guns. Now, if that was suggested back in the day, the reply would be, what kind of stupid idea is that? But, no. I think everybody had the same reaction. This isn't real. No way this is real. If I remember correctly, this game was unveiled when Sonic was inducted into the Video Game Character Hall of Fame or something. What a way to go in. So how did all this come to be? According to information I can find, a young fan wrote to Sega thinking that it would be cool if Sonic used a gun. Rather than laughing it off as they should have, Sonic Team decided to make a whole game based on that concept, but didn't think using guns would fit Sonic, so they gave it to Shadow. Which I must point out, no, I don't even think that fits Shadow's character. Shadow is arrogant and has powers over space and time. He doesn't need guns. If anything, he'd consider using guns to be beneath him. So in one sentence, I pretty much summed up what's wrong with this game. End of review? Oh no, we can't. So let's begin with the opening of the game. It starts off with this opening of Sonic looking all beat up. It's oddly metaphorical, but no, the story properly begins with Shadow looking out over the city, not really remembering anything except a gruesome image. I'm just surprised that nobody has ever mentioned to him about what happened in Sonic Adventure 2, when suddenly, aliens show up. Ugh, most of the time when you bring aliens into a series, it's usually a bad idea. Black Doom, the leader, shows up and tells Shadow to bring in the seven Chaos Emeralds, Shadow decides to believe him, whether he wants to or not. From here, the narrative can split three ways. You can be good, evil, or neutral. There are five pathways to take, which can cause things to get really lost in the shuffle. There are things like the gun commander who wants Shadow dead because he blames him for what happened 50 years ago. More on that later. Shadow can come across Eggman and seriously come to the conclusion that he's an android. I mean, seriously? You felt pain and why wouldn't you just... Cut yourself open or something, just to be sure. I mean, it couldn't hurt that much. Sometimes he'll declare himself the protector of humanity, or he can just switch sides at the end just to screw over Sonic. Sometimes he's the scourge of humanity, conqueror of the universe, and so on and so forth. He always says, this is who I am, at the end of every story. This is who I am. This is who I am. This is who I am. Eggman, target acquired. What? Goodbye, Doctor. Ah! Huh. I think he just killed Eggman. That's... something. There are several scenes that play the same, like the gun commander hating Shadow for the incident that killed Maria. Um, but you're working for the organization that killed her in the first place. He's not a very interesting character. His whole story revolves around Shadow finding out that Black Doom was involved in creating him. Retconning guns take over the arc happening not because they feared the ultimate life form, but because Gerald made a deal with aliens. Yeah, I can see why people say this game made many retcons to the storyline. Black Doom is a very boring villain. Eggman is charismatic and hilarious. Chaos has an interesting backstory. Black Doom is... I don't even know what his personality is outside of being a generic doomsday villain. He's all, I want to bring an end to humanity because, um, because I'm a bad guy and I'm going to do bad things. One last thing. There's a scene in the beginning of the story where the president, the same president from Sonic Adventure 2 actually, is looking at a picture. It's a picture of Sonic and Shadow. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me, at some point between Sonic Heroes and this game, Shadow took the time out of his day from not remembering his past to pose for a picture with Sonic, and Sonic still didn't fill in any of the blanks? I mean, I... I just... Uh, oh. I suppose the biggest problem is that you're taking a character like Shadow, who has characterization, and trying to force the whole is he good or evil angle on him. I could compare him to the Mass Effect games where you choose to be Paragon or Renegade. I know that's unfair because Mass Effect came out two years after this game. But here was Shadow's character arc in the first game. He wanted revenge on humanity because he misunderstood his best friend's last wish. Once he realized he was mistaken, he sacrificed himself to save the world. Yeah, totally a Renegade. In Sonic Heroes, he comes back, forgets everything, but still saves the world from Metal Sonic. Yeah, still not seeing where anyone gets the idea of him going fully evil from. 
Let's move on to presentation. The game's models are ripped directly from Sonic Heroes. Unfortunately, the game is just ugly to look at, with dulled colors as if they were trying way too hard to make this game look dark. See kids, we're cool now, we're edgy. The voice acting? Well, this is the first game to use 4Kids Sonic X cast, and I wasn't the biggest fan of this. I found myself missing David Humphrey's Shadow the most. He gave Shadow a very suave, arrogant, and yet charming voice. Jason Griffith's Shadow is just too much whispering and no emotion. His Sonic, I must be honest, eh, he was pretty hit and miss for me. This game, it feels like he was trying to emulate Ryan Drummond's performance. Also, there's some cursing in this game. Shadow will always say, damn it, when he gets hit. It gets kind of annoying. Damn, not here. As if there's a good place to die, Shadow. It's just another attempt to make this game edgy. Not to mention, I think they used the same guy for all the gun soldiers. What the heck is HQ doing? The black aliens have hit six major cities around the world. At least in Sonic Adventure 2, they had different voice actors. The music is kind of forgettable. The only track I kind of like is Lava Shelter, and that's all I have to say about that. As for gameplay, Shadow can do pretty much everything he could in Sonic Heroes. You can do the triangle jump, except now you can run forward for about two seconds. Shadow can now wield guns. There's various types of guns, human guns and alien guns. They all work the same way. You press the B button and you shoot, and you're free to swap weapons as you see fit. The homing attack still works as it did in Sonic Adventure games, except, what did they do? Often I find myself careening out of control into one of the many bottomless pits. More on that later. It worked fine in the Sonic Adventure games, so what happened here? Shadow can also punch and kick, but don't use this. Just don't. It's pathetically short-ranged. Shadow can also get into vehicles, but again, don't do this. Control is even worse, and you're much faster on the ground anyway. Shadow's whole gimmick is that you choose if you want to do the good pathway, the evil pathway, or the neutral pathway. Usually you have an appropriate partner as your teammate for the good and evil missions, but they don't really do much, although the second player can control them if you have one. There are 10 possible endings to the game. How you get there is up to you. There are a total of 326 possible pathways to take. Has anyone managed to do them all? You're insane! The neutral pathway is the easiest. Just run as fast as you can to the goal ring. That's fine. But for the hero or evil pathways, you have to achieve some kind of goal. Usually it means killing a certain number of enemies, or activate this plot device that'll never be mentioned again after this level. I especially hate this level where you have to team up with Maria to destroy the artificial chaos. I think some kind of radar or map would have really helped improve it. Actually, just do three pathways to take at the beginning of the game. The good, the bad, and the neutral. That's it. Doing the good way fills up your good energy, which allows you to use chaos control, which warps you ahead in the stage. This would be fine if it wasn't for the fact that you end up skipping over your objective, so you have to use a checkpoint to go back. Filling up your bad meter activates chaos blasts, which lets you destroy anything in your path. I say forget them and just stick to using infinite ammo. Another thing that annoys me is that enemies continue to attack you regardless of what element you are. Gun soldiers? Yes, it makes sense because there's a cutscene that explains why they're attacking Shadow even if you help them. But the black aliens? What's their excuse? What? That is a stupid explanation! As for what I liked, uh, well, the whole non-linear levels is a good concept in theory. It's just poorly executed. The only thing I do like is that Shadow only loses 10 rings when he gets hit. So that's a huge improvement over past games where you lose all your rings if you get hit. One last thing. The control is horrific. Shadow literally skates out of control, and because of awkward camera angles, it's very, very easy to fall into one of the many bottomless pits. The level design is, again, not improved from previous games. Bottomless pits galore, and despite there being over 60 different levels, I found that they repeated a lot of the level design just so they could be cheap and cut corners. This was released at the tail end of a generation. There's no excuse for this kind of shortcutting. The boss battles. How shall I sum them up? Simply grab a gun, shoot, and you can win in about a minute. 
you always fight one of three final bosses, Sonic and the Gun Commander, Black Doom, or Dr. Eggman. They're all pretty easy. Eggman, you just have to hit the slots to make him attack himself. No, not Shadow Fever! You deliberately put in a method for Shadow to get more powerful? That's really dumb, Dr. Eggman. Sonic and the Commander have much of the same tactics, and Black Doom is just tedious because of how long it takes. Let's just wrap this up. Once you get all 10 endings, you get the last story again. Shadow has all the Chaos Emeralds. Not sure what pathway he took since it seems like a weird compilation of them all happened in some way. Black Doom appears and pretty much traps everyone inside the Black Comet. Shadow finally decides that all his attempts to find the truth of his past don't matter and promptly declares that he's putting the past behind him while leaving everyone to get eaten. Yeah, final level. It's... Ugh. They just copied and pasted one of the final levels, didn't they? I got nothing. I just want this to be over. So Shadow reaches Black Doom. Black Doom mocks him and freezes him, but then a message activates from Professor Gerald. Turns out he designed the Eclipse Cannon to destroy the Black Comet when it came back to Earth. Yeah, sure, why not? So Shadow turns super and takes off for the final battle. What can I say about the final boss? It's easy. Again, just shoot all the debris, charge up Chaos Spear, and attack, and wait a minute, I've seen this before. This is literally exactly the same as Metal Overlord from Sonic Heroes. Cutting corners again? Ugh, whatever. Let's just finish this. Shadow destroys the comet, everyone's happy. They decide to play homage to Professor Gerald for saving them, completely forgetting that after that, Gerald made a plan to send the Ark crashing into the Earth to kill everyone. <laughs> Next thing you know, you'll be telling me that Sasuke gets away with all of his horrible deeds with a yeah, sorry. Shadow says goodbye to his past. Goodbye forever, Shadow the Hedgehog. And don't come back! So, let's sum all this up. How Shadow the Hedgehog? Boring, repetitive, and just downright tedious to play. It was an attempt to try to make the franchise seem more edgy and mature but it winds up looking more and more outdated as the years pass. It sucked in 2005, and it sucks today. All I did was find myself wishing that Shadow had stayed dead after Sonic Adventure 2. Well, we all know what's next. And it's going to be the last one of the Sonic Marathon for now. I'm going to do some other projects after this one is over. So for now, I'll be signing off. Thanks for watching, please hit that like and subscribe button, and take care.